are several kids, Emmanuel Lewis, Macaulay Culkin, Donald Trump's children, and many other children had similar relationships with Michael, and they all say nothing ever or would ever happen to them. The atmosphere was loving and the furthest thing from sexual or unsafe. They all confirmed that in their opinion, quote, MJ wouldn't hurt a fly. You know, uh, for my friend Michael Jackson, and this is a very good point, uh, Michael Jackson was a witch hunt, okay? Let me just say this. As far as I know, and I don't know all the facts because I wasn't in every room, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know a lot of things that happened in the years that I wasn't around, but all I can tell you is remarking about the person that I know, the person that was my close friend, that was like a brother to me, he was not that guy. He was a guy who was so innocent, so kind of sheltered, you couldn't even swear around him. You couldn't talk about drugs. You couldn't talk about nude women. You couldn't talk about sex. You couldn't talk about anything because he was a very religious man for much of the, you know, the early stages of his life and career. Now, he went away from that religion, tried other religions. He did all sorts of things throughout his did life. Did he ever give you advice when, he, when you were on drugs? Did he ever say anything to you when you were falling apart? Yeah, that's an interesting point. When I got arrested, I was afraid, to be honest with you, that he'd never talk to me again because he had such a clean image that I really expected he'd just be like, Psh, see ya, you know? Mm -hmm. And that really showed me the value of what type of person he was. The fact that when I did get arrested, even though his image was still squeaky clean and by all rights, he could have stepped aside and moved me back. But he didn't, he called me. I got that message on my answering machine, which said, hey Corey, it's Michael, is everything okay? Call me if you need me. You know, he was a friend, he was supportive. For years, and Lewis was quick to defend his friend last year after the airing of Martin Bashir's searing documentary. None of that, any of that, makes any of it the truth. I don't get it, and I don't think I ever will. He's always been a friend, not of just of me, but my whole entire family. You know, something all we did was watch, you know, comedy or cartoons. Could anything negative happen between the two of us? The answer to that, to my, to that question, your question, is hell no. You know, a family friend. Basically. What happened at the house? That's what all these things it's, that people are concerned about. You know, that's, that's what's about. so weird, you know. What did happen? Nothing happened, you know. Nothing. I mean, nothing, really. I mean, we played video games, you know. We, we you know, played Sleep it as an amusement bed. park. Well, the thing is, the thing is with that whole thing, is that, you know, they go, oh, you slept in the same bedroom as him. It's like, I don't think you understand. Michael Jackson's bedroom is two stories. <laughs> and it has, like, like, three bathrooms and this and that. So when I slept in his bedroom, yeah, but you have to understand the whole scenario. And the thing is with Michael is that he's not very good at explaining himself. And he never really has been. Because he's not a very social person. I mean, he's, you're talking about someone who's been sheltered and sheltering himself also for the last, like, 30 years, or you know. And so he's not very good at communicating to people and not very good at conveying what he's actually trying to say to you. And so when he says something like that, you know, people, you know, he doesn't quite understand why people react the way that they do. Why do you think he likes young people so it's because it, it's the same reason why he liked me was the fact that i didn't care who he was that was the thing i talked to him like he was a normal human being and that's what and, and kids do that to him because he's not i mean he's michael jackson the pop singer but he's not the god of you know the king of pop or anything like that he's just you know a guy who's actually very kid like himself and wants to go out there and wants to play video games with you did your parents like encourage that. it um I, they weren't against it you know it wasn't like they encouraged it or like pushing me upon it it was just kind of like i wanted to hang out with him and they were fine with it so what do you make of what he's going through now like you know like i said it's unfortunate and you know it's it's a circus right now you think it's a bad rap uh, you know, I think so, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, I mean, listen, like, look what happened the first time, the first time this happened to him. You know, if someone had done something like that to my kid, I would, you know, I wouldn't just settle for some money. You know, I'd make sure the guy was in jail, you know, and I, it just really sh goes to show, I mean, as soon as, you know, they got the money and they ran, I mean, that's really what happened the first time. And so, you know, I don't know, it's just, it's a little crazy, and I kind of have taken a step back from the whole thing, because it is a bit of a circus, and, you know, if the same thing was happening to me, I wouldn't want to drag him into it, and vice versa. After failing to prove their case, with skepticism building toward the family in the first case, the accusing families avoid the public eye and say nothing. Your child was abused by the biggest star on the planet. You lose the case and you say nothing? They lost and publicly appear to be gold-digging liars and there isn't any public defense, no book, no TV time, no close friend, relative, or concerned grandparent has anything to say. Nothing.
All living beings are creatures of habit and of a nature. We can be counted on to act or do certain things in specific situations. And quite frankly, the mother of an abused child doesn't lose a case, then slither away. The true crime is right before our faces. Innocence is always an open book with nothing to lose. In this TMZ age in which everyone clamors for their 15 minutes and a dollar, they simply cannot be believed and shame keeps them in the shadows. There is not one former friend or associate that feels he may have had a problem. From Donald Trump to Elizabeth Taylor to Jermaine and the rest of his family, they all steadfastly do not believe he did this and will hear nothing else about it. <laughs> With Michael, is that right? What's he really like, Amy? He's just like a kid. He wants to stay a kid, but he grew up. <laughs> <laughs> Do you spend a lot of time with him? When I go up there, I spend almost most of my time with him doing it. Yeah, playing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do y'all play? <laughs> what do y'all play? What do you play? What are you playing? I play on his rides and we play hide and go seek. And, and how did you meet him? We want to know that so we, we can do the same thing. Well, I was doing a commercial with him, uh -huh. and I was four, and I didn't know anything about him. And I went into his trailer, and I sat right up on his lap, and um, I, he said to himself that he was going to be friends for life. The two of you. Now, these are Amy's parents here, and I was saying when I was there that day, and I saw you all, and the whole family was there, the whole fa stand up guys. Um, they were all on the rides in the amusement park after the shoot. Oftentimes, celebrities can attach themselves to a cause or be interested for the moment, but you know that uh, Michael's feelings were quite different. I saw a very sincere Michael and somebody that, it, it's strange, after Ryan died, uh, I asked Michael, I said, well, what is it that connected you and Ryan? And he said, you know, most people can't get over the awe of who I am, so nobody can ever act normal around me. He said, Ryan knew how I wanted to be treated because that's how he wanted to be treated. Ryan spent five days with Michael uh, in 1990, right before his death. And Ryan was so worried about being a burden to Michael uh, because he, he couldn't hardly walk. He was very ill. What, Ryan and, went up to the ranch? Yes, uh, Ryan went to, mm -hmm. to the ranch and spent five days with him. And they did fun things. And the first night, I said, well, what did you, did you do? And he said, well, we spent three hours watching Three Stooges movies. I mean, I mean, this was something that Ryan loved comedy, so does Michael. Um, they went shopping, and I, I said, you know, who drove? And he said, well, Michael drove the Bentley. And I said, Michael drove himself? And yeah, me and Michael went shopping. There's enough evidence between Evan Chandler and his known-to-be greedy lawyer, Barry Rothman to raise reasonable suspicion. Barry Rothman is very experienced. He knew how to doctor child abuse cases and what needed to be charged. More likely than not, this was a well-designed extortion. Way before any allegations, Evan Chandler was behaving strangely and repeatedly suggested Jackson build an extension to their house so he could stay. When Chandler learned he wouldn't be allowed to add any extensions on his home, he began asking Jackson to buy them a new home. After he became more obvious in his hunger for money, he slowly became alienated from Michael as Michael grew closer with his ex-wife and children. Michael, the ex-wife, and the children grew closer and went on trips together without him. Chandler began to complain about being cut off. In his growing jealousy and greed, he went in for the kill. There are also very interesting taped conversations that incriminate him clear as day. CBS News has obtained a taped phone conversation. The voices are purportedly the father of the 13-year-old boy who is accusing Michael Jackson of molesting him and the boy's stepfather. The conversation was taped in July before the police began their investigation. This man is going to be humiliated beyond belief. 
and he's not going to believe it. He will not believe what's going to happen. It's beyond, it's beyond his worst nightmare. So one more record. If I go through with this, I will get big time. I will get everything I want. There will be some story forever. From the beginning, Jackson's private investigator said the accusations were brought about by a failed extortion attempt and says the taped conversation reinforces that. It spells out everything to me that this was a, you know, an extortion attempt from the very beginning. It was all planned. Long time